this place. I know Minister James is not here and also Pastor for always giving us this opportunity. Amen. Amen. We, we, we are always here to hear the word of God. And as we go, those of us who miss our Bible studies, we are certainly saying something that um, spiritual growth, even though we come to church, when we're back home, we believe oh, we go to Sunday school every day so that you will grow. Read your Bible pray every day so that you will grow. That about 99.9% depends on you. For you to, because it's only one Sunday that we come to church. And as we are here, we sing, we pray, we do all kinds of things. It's, it's not just our good having Bible studies. So your personal time, the time you invest to learn the word of God, helps you a lot. And the time is coming that I think we will not even have the privilege to come together like this to learn. We all know what happened during the Corona season. We were in our various homes to learn. And sometimes you are going, you, you are having Zoom, you feel distracted in so many ways. So you will only help or grow when you spend your own time to what feast on the Word of God. Amen. I'm just saying that this is just by the way, so that we know that it's not just the norm of coming to church alone and once we go home, we close our Bibles. There are so many things when you go home, especially if you're a mother or you're a wife, you, you go through so many things before you realize the day has ended. And you're like, hey, I couldn't even read my Bible. You can even go for a week if care is not taking you, not even read your Bible. You only hear the word of God when you come to church. And if you don't eat for a week, what happens to you? So if you don't eat, on the word of God for a week, spiritually, we are going down. And we take things for granted. But those people who join upwards, they don't joke with when it comes to their spirituality. If they know that they have to wake up at 12 a.m., 2 a.m., to go to their uh, uh, separate room and do something, they will go there. They will not say, I'm tired today, because they know the consequences. If I don't do it, this is what will happen. But we Christians, we take things for granted. We take things like this. And sometimes we, we just, I don't want to use, we abuse the mercies of God. Right. We don't even pray. We wake up like, you know, you will need that I'm prayer. Uh-huh. But if, if you are in an awkward and we ask you to wake up at 12 a.m. to pray or come and do something, go and carry coffee, you will wake up and go and do it. Amen. So please, let's all be cautious of how we, we, we like, we are back on a Christian journey of our relationship with God. Amen. With that said, let's enter into a time of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you this afternoon. Father, we are all here for your sake. We are not here to listen to man. We are here to listen to what you have for us today. We pray for understanding of your word. We pray for rhema into your word. We pray that as we are here, may our life be transformed upon hearing the word of God. May we live here holding on to something great, something precious, that we will work with the rest of our life. We thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. And this afternoon, I just want to share something quick because our time is fasting. I will just be brief and we will enter into time of prayer. And the title of my message this afternoon is Victory at Last. Amen. Victory at Last. Amen. And we'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 going. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 going. Amen. And yes, Mr. Okay. Seddon will be helping you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the verse 50 downwards, I read, What I am saying, my dear brothers and sisters, is that your physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This dying body cannot inherit what will last forever. 51. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, when the last trump is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to life forever. And we who are living will be 
transform. Amen. 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 We will continue as we go. Amen. Amen. This morning I was listening to Bishop that God knows. And I heard in the news that his, his son passed, his first son passed away. And I know during his study he had a, a bigger convention in the lighthouse. So I was wondering, will this man come and preach? And when I saw him march the the pumps, I was like, wow. Somebody who had just lost his son. Sometimes we give so many excuses not to be in the house of God. We have so, so, so many excuses. And there was something he said. He said, death is an enemy to man. When you look at, uh, when, when, you, when you see death, it makes you ask yourself, why well, then all this toy in life? Why should I even do this? Why should I go to school? Why should I even work hard? The why and the why and the why. Because at the end of the day, once you die, that's it. Right? We do, we, we go, we do all kinds of things. But you, the day you die, you won't carry all your possession or all your riches with you. And then it doesn't respect who you are. Whether you are poor, rich, minister, whoever you are. No. Once it visits you, it's, it's there. Unless God intervenes, or unless that's not the will of God. But if it's the will of God for you to leave that particular moment, you are gone. But the Bible also says, I say, away and fast walk. So when, when you look at the, like from the Bible perspective and you look at everything, you're like, ah, what do you mean by away and fast walk? If I, I'm here having my life enjoying, and one day I'll wake up and that's it. And you tell me that death is our gain, then that's the question mark. But it's indeed our gain. When we go through the scriptures, we will know that as Christians, our as children of God who are saved, indeed, death is our gain. Whenever we, we sow a seed, what happens to the seed? If, if you put a seed on the ground, what happens to it? It dies. And after it dies, what happens? It germinates. And once it germinates, what happens? The bear fruit. Hallelujah. So, maybe you think, oh, this seed, that's the end. But it's not the end. Once we die, we are like seed. But that is not the end for us. Amen. I'm going to take the step, the, uh, the verse one by one so that we will know it. Amen. Verse 50 says, I'm reading from my verse of New King James Version. She says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit in corruption. When I read, many a times I've heard this scripture over and over again. But this morning I didn't, I, I, like, I didn't understand it the way I understood it this morning. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's why you keep saying, in heaven there is no family. That's right. Because once we are here, how do we identify that we belong to a particular family? Through our blood, our name, our DNA. So if flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, then that means what happened? Yes. Hallelujah. If we can say, oh, a brother is Mr. Sedem, um blood brother. If indeed they are related, but if they are not related, we can say they are what? Related through blood. And we can find out that yes, they, they have the same bloodline. If you check your bloodline, uh, your DNA with your father, we will see that, oh, yes, this is true, like the son, so so and so. Or we can identify you by your name. We can say, oh, the buttons, the menses, the you know, oh, they are from this family. Even as we are here, we can say, once you mention your name, somebody will know that you are from Ghana, or you are from Europe, or whatever you are from. Amen. I want, I want us to understand this carefully. Okay? So it says, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So what happens? Let's go to the next 51. It says, behold, I tell you a mystery, and this is the mystery. We shall not all sleep. When we die in that kind, it says, If somebody is there, it's like the person is sleeping. 
So we believe that once you, you, you are dead, it's like you are sleeping. But it says, we shall not all sleep. So who are the ones that, that will not sleep? Let's find out those who won't sleep. Amen. But we shall be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an hour, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So once we sleep, we are not just sleeping, but there's a transformation going on. A transformation where flesh and blood are being transformed. When you read the Proverbs, like the verse 48 and 49, it says that we were made from dust, so we are man of dust. But to inherit the kingdom of God, we have to be men of heaven. And that is what Jesus Christ came to demonstrate. We believe God created Adam using what? The soil, the earth, to create Adam. But once we die, we have to leave this body here. And this body is what body is made of, like our flesh and blood. And we can't go to heaven in this body. The same way spirits cannot operate in this earth unless they need a body. So we can't go to heaven with this flesh and blood. We will leave it here. I want you to understand the concept of death. Everybody will die. I say some will be awake. And once we are dead, then there is a transformation going on. And that transformation is what we, we are being changed. Because I, I don't want to use my own words. Hallelujah. Okay, I, I, I'm continuing from the verse 52. It says, And the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must be put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall he shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, then is swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. So after that, they will say, yes, they have been swallowed up in victory. And that was what Jesus said a thousand years ago. When Jesus died, everybody was crying because we thought that was the end. But at that time, Jesus was like a sea that had been what? Bound. And he went through that transformation to overcome, to defeat death. So that we will have that, if we don't have nothing to look up to, Jesus the Jesus death will build an evidence for us that yes, indeed he died. But on the third day, he rose again. And yes, death was swallowed. Amen. Amen. So that flesh, that body, we saw Jesus in. He appeared a new man. That's why when they wanted to tell him, he said, No, I haven't shown myself to my father yet. So a time is coming that this flesh and blood, indeed, we will leave it here. We believe that once we bury a person within some few days or so, when you go, you only go see bones. Because we were, we were created from the dust, and that's where we indeed what belong. But I want to tell you that we will not die. We are just sleeping. And there will be transformation. We are just going to be what? Transformed. To be a, a man of heaven. So that we can inherit the kingdom of God. When we relate this verse to our lives, I said there are some times where victory looks like defeat. And it's like that for a purpose. God always has a way of doing things. A time came when Jesus, the multitude wanted to stone Jesus. And the Bible said he just passed by and went away. And I asked, why is it that he didn't challenge them that, yes, I'm the son of God. Why do you want to stone me? You can't stone me. But that wasn't the time. And in the eyes of other people, you might think that Jesus was defeated us at that time. But that wasn't the time. When the time came, he died and he was glorious. He died and he resurrected and was victorious. So there are some times we go through some situations in our life and we look like, yes, we've been defeated. But if that is the will of God as at that time, you are not defeated. It's a glorious moment. It's a victorious moment. There are some times we go through that because we, we, God wants to hide us for the appropriate time. 
If Jesus had died as at that time, it would have been a foolish death. Some people say John the Baptist died a foolish death because if he, he poked his nose when he wasn't supposed to. That's right. So some say, oh, he, he was too, he thought Jesus would come and but Jesus, Jesus was in sin lane. So there are some things you don't just do because you think you have power. As I said, it's not everything that you say, I can do all things to guys who me. You have to know the time and season. You have to know when to do things and when not to do things. Because otherwise, you do certain things and it will make our God look like a liar. But God is not a man that will lie. There are so many times Jesus had the opportunity to prove that, yes, he's great, but the, that time you just keep quiet. They asked him, Are you on the son of God? He said, That's what I are saying. He could have just shown that, Yes, I am strong, I am dead, but no. After he died on the third day, he rose again. And I keep asking myself, So between the Good Friday and the, the, the Resurrection Sunday, that Sunday day, what was happening? That was when Jesus defeated death. Jesus went through that transformation. And we all believe a time is coming. And maybe there's not going to be a trumpet that will sound papa and everything will come to an end. But the day you die, your trumpets have sounded for you. The day you die, yes, you are going to sleep and you're going to be what? Transformed. So that you can go and inherit the kingdom of God. If indeed you are saved. It's not everybody that is going there. So we shouldn't just be frightened by what goes on in the world. Let's know that we have a savior. Who has laid down his life for us. Who has set that example for us. And evidence for us to follow. Amen. And one thing I want us to know too is good things, not because we're Christian that all the time good things are going to happen to you. No. And there are some time, I keep saying we go through certain situations because we have to go through that particular situation at that time for the victory ahead. Jesus received good beating. Somebody in the German would say a sound one. And he endured. Just look at the, that day. It's, it's so horrible. We always see um, videos of people trying to, um, let's say, um, mimic or depict what happened, but it, it can never be compared to what happened during that day. And when you watch some of the um, movies, you see the devil was smiling because he thought, oh, okay, the Savior is no more here. And he thought he was going to rule. But he said, on the third day, everything changed. Yeah. We shall be indeed transformed. That's right. So we shouldn't worry about death. We shouldn't be afraid of death. Amen. Yeah. If, once we see our loved ones, the fact that you're not going to see them again is so hard. It's so painful. There are some people who sometimes sit down and I ask myself, hey, so I'm not going to see this person again. No way on this earth. But I come and I also encourage myself, okay, I know that the time is coming. We will see again. But that is only if, indeed, we are saved. And Mr. Saddam says something right now that if the day we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, that means we have been what? We have been saved. But what is salvation without, without repentance? You can't say you are saved and you keep doing the old things you do again. No. Once you say you are for God or you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, let's see that life in you. It's, it's, it's a gradual process, but you get there. Keep on practicing, practicing, practicing. Do it so that it will become part and parcel of you. Amen. I'm just going to bring my message to one end, but I'm going to read the verse 56. It says, The sin of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who give us the victory. Therefore, my brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
So in the beginning, I said sometimes we labor, we toil, and we think like, ah, if everything is going to be in vain, if I'm going to die, then why do I even worry myself about this? But this verse is telling us that we should know that our Jesus Christ came to die. So we've seen that life. So whatever we are doing, our labor is not going to be in vain. So whatever you find yourself doing, do it knowing that you are using this to glorify God. Because at the end of the day, our labor, whatever we do, will never be in vain. Amen. Shall we all bow? Let's stand up, please. Let's stand up. And I want us to pray. We just want to pray about three prayer topics. I just want you to enter into the moment of prayer. The word of God has come. There are so many things for us to think about. But victory, once we have Jesus on our side, we know that our victory is assured. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God. May your name alone be honored. May we be strengthened. We are praying that the Lord strengthen us. Being on this earth alone is not easy. But we are praying that as children of God, the strength of God will always be with us. Day, morning, wherever we find ourselves. So that we will not backslide. We will not miss our way. We will not give up. Let's begin to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, for us. Spirit of God, fill us and strengthen us this morning. Lord, we receive your strength. In the mighty name of Jesus, may our life be filled with the strength of God. As we journey on this earth, direct every step, every path. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, may we not miss our ways. May we not miss our ways. May we always cling to you. May we know that love is